Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about valence and in particular look at an implementation that does not use transformers or transmission lines but rather a more or less simple combination of inductors and capacitors. Other than being a narrow band valen, what makes this thing special is that you can build it to achieve any impedance ratio. So if you're curious about how to build it and how it works, then keep watching. Now, valence are very common in RF applications. Based on the frequency of operation and the needed bandwidth, one type or another is commonly used. However, one problem that you might run into is, other than getting the balanced to unbalanced interface, is also getting a specific impedance transformation. Common circuits do exist for integer ratios, but when you need some odd ratio, you start to run into issues. The other problem you might have is size. In certain cases, a transformer or a bunch of transmission line can be quite bulky compared to just a few capacitors and inductors. So to understand how the LC Balen circuit works, we need to decompose it into its components. And first, we need to remember a few things about LC filters. So these are second order filters, there are two reactive elements, and based on the arrangement, we get the two configurations, either the high pass version or the low pass version. If we now look at the response characteristic, we get the obvious high pass and low pass behavior with a gain peak occurring at the corner frequency, and then the slope will be of 40 decibels per decade, either rising or falling. And the exact response amplitude at the corner frequency will be Q factor dependent. So it will be impacted by the exact load that is added on the output of the filter. However, the interesting bit appears when we also look at the phase response. So the total phase shift that is achieved is either plus 180 degrees at frequencies below the corner frequency for the high pass or minus 180 degrees at frequencies above the corner frequency with the low pass but right at the corner frequency itself, the phase shift will be plus or minus 90 degrees. So when you have two of these filters running in parallel and you supply them with a signal at the exact corner frequency, you will be getting two output signals, which in reference to each other will be plus 90 in reference to minus 90, 180 degrees phase shifted, one in reference to the other. And well, if all the components are the same, they will also be at the same amplitude. So we get a very nice differential signal. And the load matching can be controlled based on the exact LC components that are chosen. Anyway, without going into too many details, the exact needed components can be calculated using some design formulas that will work with real input and output impedances. Or more easily, you can just use some online calculators to figure out the components. To get a better look at the inner workings of the circuit, let's now turn to some LT spice simulations. So first off, I calculated some component values that can be used for a balen that connects a 50 ohm unbalanced signal source to a 100 ohm balanced load. And we can start by looking at the two halves in isolation. So if we stimulate the circuits with an ideal signal source, so one that has no internal resistance, and we look at the outputs, we can clearly see that at around 10.2 MHz, we have the exact same amplitude on both signals, and the phase shift is about plus and minus 90 degrees. So there is an exactly 180 degrees of phase shift in between the two signals. Now, just as a side note, if we do simulate a more realistic circuit, so we add a non-zero signal source impedance, and we again look at the two outputs, it may seem that the response of the circuits no longer has the 180 degrees of phase shift in between. So we see about plus minus 60 something. Now this is occurring because of the effect of the filter on the signal source. So if we look at the input signal, we no longer see a zero degrees signal, but rather something else. However, we can still confirm that the filter is adding 
the 90 degrees of phase shift by plotting the ratio of input to output signal. So if we do this, then we get the same result as before. At the corner frequency of about 10.2 MHz, both circuits have the same amplitude and the 180 degrees of phase shift. Finally, we can put everything together and see the complete Balen. So I prepared three circuits to show some extreme behaviors. On the one side we have the two half loads connected to ground, then we have the version with a completely floating load, and finally, a version in which the load is only partially connected to ground in the middle. Now, if we plot out the signal present on the output, so the difference in between the two lines, so first off for the split load, then the floating load, and finally the partially grounded load, in all cases, at exactly 10.2 MHz, we get the same amplitude, with a drop off on either side. So we can confirm the narrow band operation. Now, in regions away from the corner frequency, the response of the free circuits is not the same, based on how exactly the load was connected to ground. But at the exact corner frequency, the response is identical. Now, at the same time, we can also look at the input of the free circuits and observe that we are getting exactly minus 6 decibels with 0 degrees of phase shift at the same 10.2 MHz frequency. So all the circuits are impedance matched to the signal source. Again, a similar behavior, at different frequencies, we are getting different results. And finally, we can check out just what type of Balen this is by simulating it with an unbalanced load. So I prepared two more circuits where the load is no longer balanced, so each branch sees a different load, and I did make two versions in which each branch has once a higher and once a lower impedance. And if we first plot out the voltages on the two sets of circuits, we can see that at the 10.2 MHz point, the voltages are different within the same balance, so the green trace and the blue trace clearly have a different amplitude, same with the red and the, well, bluish trace. So this is not a voltage balance. But if we proceed to plot out also the currents, at the same 10.2 MHz frequency, all branches have exactly the same current running through them. So we can confirm that this type of Valen is a current Valen, since regardless of load balance, the output current will still stay balanced. To verify how this thing works, I also built a practical experiment with the circuit that we were simulating. So this has a split termination, and it's connected to the oscilloscope to be able to measure the various signals. And well, the incoming signal is coming from the signal generator. So we can see our two branches and the ground current. Let's now look in a bit more detail into the results. Now, in the very first experimental circuit, so I built a circuit that we've just simulated, I used some ceramic capacitors that I had lying around. And when testing this circuit, well, I couldn't really find a frequency at which the circuit was showing a balanced behavior. So even though in this measurement, the voltages look the same, there is a very clear non-zero current going to ground, so the pink line, and the two signals are not 180 degrees phase shifted. So this can be observed by the exact point in which they intersect. Now, it is true that the components that I've used in my circuit are not ideal, they all have some tolerances, and well, there is some sort of imbalance in the circuit, but my guess was that the result also had something to do with the exact capacitors that I was using. So if these are not NPO or C0G, then they will vary their capacitance with the input signal. So I found some old film capacitors, so something that looks like this, 240 picofarads, and when I placed these into the circuit and I retested, well, first off, the corner frequency, so it slightly decreased because of the larger capacitance, but at least the output response of the circuit came closer to ideal. So the ground current became much smaller than before, and also the phase difference in between the two branches was also smaller. Now, as with any resonance circuit, it is critical to make sure that you have not just the correct component values, but also that the parameters stay constant as the signal is being applied. 
And well, finally, I tried to unbalance the load, so I added an extra 100 ohm resistor in parallel with one of the previous 51 ohm resistors, so to get a total value of about 34 ohms. And with this setup, we can see that even though the voltages on the two branches have clearly changed, so one is clearly bigger than the other, the ground current stays more or less the same. So this confirms that the circuit is behaving like a current balen. Now, other than the single frequency LC balen circuit that we looked at until now, I did find another more complex implementation that can be used for dual frequency operation. It uses an extra set of inductors and capacitors, but if you need to work on just two specific frequencies, this sort of balen might be useful. Now, the main idea with this thing is that you are using LC groups, which based on the exact operating frequency have a specific reactance and well behavior. At the first lower frequency, the series circuit will behave capacitively and the parallel circuit will behave inductively. And while the exact reactance value being the ones that you would need in the basic single frequency LC balen, and then at the second higher frequency, the roles will reverse, the series circuit becomes inductive, and the parallel circuit turns capacitive. Again, the exact reactance values being the ones that you would need in a simple LC balen. So basically, you end up getting two different LC balens based on the exact signal frequency. Now, in the documents linked below, there is a research paper where this sort of balen is being used for a push-pull amplifier and well, they also provide exact design equations for the various components. And one interesting observation to be made about the equations is that you can use this sort of circuit to match some balanced and unbalanced load values, as is the case here, but you can also work with different impedances at the different frequencies. So just keep this in mind when performing the exact design. The linked paper uses different load values on the balance side, but the same principle can be applied for the unbalanced side as well. Now, just to test this circuit out, I prepared a simulation in which I used the values that would be needed to connect a 50 ohm unbalanced signal source to a 75 ohm balanced load. And as transmission frequencies, I used 144 MHz and 435 MHz. So this sort of thing could be used on the 2 meter and 70 centimeter ham bands to drive a dipole. Now, if we run the simulation and we look at the signal on the output, we can see that the output load sees two peak responses, one at exactly 144 megahertz and the other at 435 megahertz. And well, if we look to the input side, so on the signal source, at these same frequencies, we are getting our minus six decibel point and the zero degrees of phase shift, indicating that the circuit is indeed being matched at these two frequency points. And of course, depending on your exact needs, different values and different impedances could be calculated for. In the end, even though this circuit is not all that common, it has its applications when small sized or odd impedance ratios are needed. It's usually easier to find inductors and capacitors with strange values than it is to get non-standard transformers or transmission lines. As with any circuit though, real life component tolerances and parameter variations will have a detrimental effect on the final functionality. So this needs to be kept in mind when components are chosen. And with that said, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be updated on my videos and see you next time. Bye bye.